Hello everyone, my name is uh, Farah, or Farah's Elephant Game, and um, I was asked by a couple of friends uh, to make a kind of carrier tutorial video with a slight um, view on competitive gameplay, uh, kind of clan battles, rank battles, that type of thing. So uh, we're going to be looking at carriers today, specifically the Shikaku. Uh, we'll explain the kind of setup, uh, captain skills, ship setup, uh, playing control, and then basically what to do and when to do it in a typical game in a kind of a short 5-10 minute video kind of an overview. So uh, let's get started shall we? Here we have uh, my Shukaku and um, it's your typical tier 8 ship. Now you might ask why do you use the Shukaku rather than say another tier 8, the Lexington? The main reason is due to the number of uh, plane waves. The Lexington is limited in four um, plane waves at most, two fighters, two dive bombers. It doesn't have the same flexibility, it doesn't have the same balance control. It's in all regards at the moment as of patch 5.14 an inferior ship. There's just more you can do with uh, the Japanese Shukaku. So getting starting we'll have a look at the modules. Uh, specifically the upgrades. Uh, the standard setup is to go with 10% um, average damage per second of aircraft guns. Now that's all guns, that's fighters and bombers. It's very important for bombers because you can stack this up as we'll see in a moment. Uh, allows them to kind of shrug off uh, fighter scouts uh, on enemy ships. Uh, we definitely need the 20% fighter HP. Whether you're scouting with fighters or you're just having a fighter engaging with the enemy fighters, um, it's like the most important upgrade. Uh, after that we go with the reduction to um, kind of fire flooding, uh, that type of scenario. Um, it's just a damage mitigator, it's the best option you have in this particular section. The next uh, module, we actually go with damage control and modification too, because we want to reduce the time we're flood, uh, flooding or on fire. This is more of a counter pressure um, if the enemy CV is trying to bomb you, burn you, that type of thing. This module is honestly way more effective than the steering and the turning. Uh, and then finally we take concealment just because we, we don't like being spotted by planes or by ships and that thing you can get like long 20 kilometer range shots from a Maggie's Enkals, that type of stuff. Uh, in terms of ammunition and consumables, we take the premium repair and we also take the premium uh, defensive fire. Now you don't need to do that in random battles but if you're playing competitive you want to have as quick a reload on the consumables and we'll talk about when we use these things in particular uh, but it's really important that these are premium. Uh, there's another thing we need to talk about which we'll come back to which is what ship setup we'll go with. Do we go with three fighters, one torpedo bomber, two dive bombers? Or do we go with the balance 2-2-2 that everyone more or less plays in random? Two fighters, two torpedo bombers, two dive bombers. We'll come back to that. Um, moving on to the exterior of the ship. Um, you always, at the very least, want to take the reduced detectability camel to reduce your concealment to 10.8 kilometers. Um, anything more than that it kind of risks you to being spotted and shot at from long range uh, shells, especially when the map, such as ocean, don't allow you to stay hidden uh, behind kind of terrain. Uh, in terms of uh, signals, there are two ways of doing signals. One is a defensive setup and one is an offensive setup. So the offensive setup is to take um, uh, the Victor Lima. This increases the flooding chance by 4%. The fire percent, the fire percent chance from dive bombers is useful, but you're really after the flooding benefit. Um, the second one is the Juliet Whiskey. Uh, can't pronounce that. It's bit, you're after the 15 percent flooding bonus. That combined with the Victor Lima gives you a theoretically a 19 percent increased chance. And the the reason you're after this is because you want uh, torpedo bombers have a very low chance of causing flooding, so you want to maximize that chance because your damage doesn't come from your alpha strike, it also comes from your ability to damage over times or dots with fires, floodings. So these extra flags really, really help. Uh, we also take the India X-ray. This increases the chance of another fire. You really, you're after one or two fires from your dive bomber or single dive bomber wave, so they come in very handy. And then finally, we take November Echo uh, Settle 7. This is a benefit to your carrier's AA, which is nice if you're being pressured or something's trying you, but also, crucially, it gives a 10% um, damage to aircraft over gunners, i.e. your bombers. Now, factor that in with the 10% uh, damage increase you get from the module, you're at 20%, and captain skills, we're going to bump that up a bit more. The defensive signal setup is kind of optional here, but many players do go with India Yankee, which reduces the burning time uh, of extinguishing. So if, if you're being dive bombed, if someone's trying to trigger your repair, if they're trying to hurt you because planes can't take off when you're under fire, that is a really powerful flag to take. 
Lesser so is the flooding equivalent, because if you're flooding then things are going really bad, and that's not necessarily going to help you considering how it's a two minute flood. Uh, I do know that many carriers like to take Sierra Mike, give themselves the extra speed to maneuver around the map. Um, and then it's kind of a, a mixture of what we've already covered. Uh, but for me, I always play carriers aggressive, definitely increasing my flooding and fire chance along with increasing the AA of my ship and the AA of uh, the uh, kind of fighter planes and, and all that type of stuff. Uh, so that's the signals and camels. Uh, in terms of captain skills, uh, I guess it'd be easier if I showed it on my Hikuryu. This is an 18 point captain, although you, at the moment with the captain skills you only need 17 points. The first, and we'll actually have a look at a 15 point captain here. Um, this is what I consider the bare minimum in terms of a captain setup. I definitely value basic fire training first as the first skill that you take from your captain. The increased AA on your carrier along with the signal flag gives you a 20% damage bonus to your AA. The killing off a, a bomber is more effective, I think, than reducing the amount of time that you're firing and flooding by 15%. Yes, that stacks with the other signal flags, but I'm not using those other signal flags in my normal aggressive setup, so I definitely value the basics of fire training. Once we get to the 16th point and more, then we can come back to playing with the expert rear gunner, which gives another 10% to the rear, um, you know, uh, damage of the rear facing gunners from bombers. So that's a 30% increase from the three different areas. It's very effective, it's very powerful, it kills off any fighter planes that try to tag onto it, be the scout planes or normal fighter planes. Uh, you just want to buff your planes in general, but that does not come first. The second skill, torpedo armor and expertise, it's kind of self explanatory, but 20% reduced servicing time with torpedo bombers means you can quickly service your planes, get them back in the air, especially in a critical moment of the game. Maybe you're being pressured, maybe you're being chased, or maybe you just want to turn around your planes as fast as possible and take off as quick as you can. There is no other skill in this area that is as good. Uh, and the third one, you want to take torpedo acceleration. It's a no brainer. The 20% uh, torpedo uh, range reduction is fine because the 5 knots increase is huge because the torpedo bomber torps only go 40 knots to go 45 knots. It's a significant bigger bonus than, say, what destroyers have when their torps are already at 60 plus knots. It also makes it, the torpedoes uh, converge when you use manual bombing much, much tighter and faster. And it means you can get significantly closer to ships when you manual bomb to release your payload. Uh, and they can't dodge it, they can't turn it, that type of thing. So torpedo acceleration, very powerful. It also very powerful if you're cross-dropping uh, destroyers because they can't outrun the torpedoes or escape. Uh, fourth skill, self-explanatory, get aircraft, aircraft servicing expert, 5% uh, HP to all your planes, fantastic. 10% servicing time, also fantastic. And then finally, the most important skill, which is why everyone must have a 15-point captain to be competitive, is the additional fighter. The, the, the five fighters is mandatory. The, the extra dive bomber is nice for scouting or for dive bombing, but anyway, that's the captain skills. Um, so those are the basic setups for your ship. Uh, we've covered... Um, signals, modules, all that type of thing, how you want to set up before you go into a competitive game. Let's have a quick look here now at how do you control your fighters and when do you choose to barrage before we have a look. So, Here we go. So there are three setups here on this scenario. The first one on the far left as we're showing right now, this is uh, if you've got two fires coming in at each other, right? And you might have, you know, two groups of fighters coming in. If you don't want to risk being barraged on a head on attack, such as in this middle example right now, by coming head on, the enemy ship theoretically, especially if he's an American fighter, can choose to barrage into you. Now, your five fighter Japanese wave, when it bumps into a Japanese five fighter wave, you'll lose one plane on a straight up head on attack. So you'll go down to four, but crucially, you'll lose something like 35 to 36 percent of your ammo. It's a massive drain of ammunition. If you don't want to barrage into each other, because don't forget, once you barrage through, you'll go through below the fighter, and then you might be in the anti-air bubble of um, his friendly ships. That fighter then turns around and then tags you. So barraging is always a dangerous thing to do head on. Uh, typically, what you want to do is come in from a side, from a side angle, like this option number two here. But we'll come back to the second. On the left, uh, what I normally do in my games, if I have a fighter coming straight at me and he definitely wants to tag me, 
I don't want to barrage into him because I don't feel like it, maybe I don't want to do it, so therefore I'll take a right angle and then I'll double back in. It means that if he alt controls and wants to barrage, he has to keep manipulating and changing the angles, and I want to kind of manipulate the fighter so it's very difficult for him to barrage me and then I tag him. And you only tag if you're not inside... Um, I should put this, if, if, you're, if you're not inside enemy anti-air. There are, there are some circumstances where you have to fight enemy fighters and that's up for you to decide when that happens but if you have to spot if you have to lock his fighters so he doesn't molest your bombers there's lots of options or if you just want to generally fight his fighters and then bleed them down that is an option uh, but typically i don't go on a head on barrage uh, as we show here uh, because head on barrages you waste ammunition you don't kill enough planes the so we're going to be example on the right when your fighter comes in the front and let's say he's got bombers incoming if your battleship's under threat and you have absolutely no time, or any other ship that's under threat and you have no time to stop them, you go on a head on barrage. You might kill one or two fighters, assuming you have five fighters in your wave, because the number of fighters in the wave is the DPS that you have in that barrage. So you come with option number one. The second best option is to come at a side angle, because it, it increases the time that you are barraging the enemy planes that are in the kill area, and you'll kill maybe two or three. The best option, if you have enough time, however, is to actually fly behind, coming at them from behind, and then barraging them from the rear, and then you'll absolutely wreck them. Uh, and that's, that goes to the same for any plane. Fighter planes, torpedo bombers, dive bombers, hitting them from behind in a full barrage will kill them. Uh, and you can even kill full waves when your fighter wave itself is not at full strength. Uh, important thing to note, fighters, Japanese ones specifically, have two full barrages, and then they have one little clip of ammunition left, which is a couple of shots. So if you do the first barrage and you miss, it's not all over, you can still hold them back, but once you're down to two bars or, or less of ammunition, it's really time to thinking about how do I get my fighter back, rearm it, and then get it out in the front line without letting my ship suffer. Uh, so anyway, that's a light kind of crash course on how to barrage and then when to fight or engage, or how not to get kind of ruined in yourself. Uh, let's have a quick look here and maybe in a typical scenario in a, kind of a rank 2 clan battle. So right now, as we can see on the map, uh, it's a little bit messy, but this is a 9 versus 9 on the map Trident, okay? So the basic map has begun, and the ships are in the, kind of a theoretical starting position. The North Green group has gone for Charlie, the South Red group has gone for Alpha, and they're fighting over Bravo. This yellow line signifies the sort of anti-air no-fly zone. The red guy won't go over into the green, and the green guy carrier won't necessarily go over to the red. There are a couple of options of what to do here. We can see that the red carrier has gone 2-2-2 two, 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 and the green carrier in his planes has gone 3 one, two. So there's a difference in having an extra fighter plane compared to a torpedo bomber. Well, what are the benefits? Well, if we were looking from the perspective of the green carrier, who's 3 one, two, the green carrier will typically take a, a dive bomber as the first taking off plane, will drop the payload automatically because that increases the speed of the bombers. He'll spot over Bravo, see what the enemy's doing, and then maybe make sure that his friendly ships on their cap point are not spotted. After that, he may go actually go hunting down the carrier and find where the carrier is, see what's going on. When it comes to the center, the next thing the green carrier does is maybe launches all these fighters. At the same time, the red carriers, maybe he's launched his torpedo bombers, maybe he's launched his fighters. But the fact is, with your fighters on the opposite line, the red guy, he can't contest. And even if it's 3-1-2, he doesn't want to contest because neither wants to fight over the enemy's anti-air bubble because they'll just lose the fighter duel. As a carrier, you only have three waves of fighters, you know, you can only reload three times, and then after that, it's very easy to lose them all, you've got no fighters, you have no control of the map. Because it's a organized clan or ranked battle, they can go 20 minutes, it's not like standard ranked mode or random battles where everyone just dies randomly. People, it can come down to stalemates, it's all about sight. So in this particular instance, the a green carrier is just jostling for position. He does not want to allow the red carrier freedom to bomb, and the red carrier, because it's three versus two, can't honestly use his fighters to create a protective envelope to allow his bombers to go in, because the green carrier can guarantee a kill on the two fighters, and the third one can reinforce, or the third one can intercept the bombers. That means that the red carrier is at a kind of an impasse and a stalemate, and he is waiting until either A, green ships start losing or sinking from the, his own team, or perhaps the anti-air on, sh on, on ships, the guns have been wounded and damaged by you know, high explosive, uh, and therefore he can move in and try and bomb. However, the green carrier can form a, part, a type of pressure. 
the dive bomber, if it spots the carrier, the extra torpedo bomber and the extra dive bomber can be sent around to go after the carrier. Theoretically, you can bait the enemy's red fighters, jostling them or keeping them in position, and then you can actually attempt to attack the enemy carrier with just one torpedo bomber and one dive bomber. This is carrier pressure in a ranked blade with 312. The dive bomber can go for the carrier, trigger a fire, and the torpedo bomber can stay outside of that range and keep kind of pressure on the rear. Now, one of two things happens. The red carrier keeps his planes at the front to prevent his destroyers from being spotted, or alternatively, he brings these fighters back, which means you can then continue to spot, if you want, their destroyers, or you can hold the line type of thing. At any point, when it becomes no longer safe for, if the carrier repairs the fire, or if these fighters are coming back, preventing your torpedo bomb strike, you go in for the strike on the carrier. If the carrier's smart, he will use his defensive fire, which is a two minute kind of scramble attack. That's fine. You go in with a V angle, you guarantee at least one torpedo hits, and that's where those flooding flags come in really effective because if he is forced to repair the fire and you get a flooding you do a massive amount of damage to him just with those two bombers if you don't get the flooding and he repairs the fire doesn't matter you've done a little bit of damage and you've uh you know you've wounded him down maybe to three quarters health maybe a bit more you can continue to keep him spotted with a dive bomber at this time and maybe some of your battleships can get long range shells in or alternatively you allow all planes to either die or return to the carrier while your fighters are basically keeping control. At this point, his two minute counter is triggered. Now as the red carrier, if you press the P button on your aircraft carrier, turn your air anti-aircraft off, and then press the P button to turn your anti-aircraft on again, that will instantly reset the defensive fire cooldown. Now you've only got one more, but it's enough for the game to last. But even with that two minute carrier, the green carrier, assuming he has no other roles or obligations, because at this moment the most important thing is the green carrier is not to allow his ships to be spotted or, you know, the enemy to get his way with the torpedo bombers on their type of ship. So he's playing smart with his own fighters. We'll load all three bombers. And now these three bombers can either go south, they can go west, they can rotate around the map and can go for another strike on the carrier. By the time they have taken off, grouped up and then head towards the carrier, the defensive fire will have run out. At this time, you can also send a fighter escort if you want to, so that if the red carrier tries to intercept, it doesn't matter if you're in any envelope, it doesn't matter if you're going to lose them, you just need a few precious seconds to get past the carrier itself. While this is happening, your third fighter can stay behind, can prevent the enemy carrier from bombing, and at this point, you go one dive bomber in for the fire, and then you see whether or not he triggers the repair, but you also go in with a torpedo bomber, and you want to do maximum damage. You're looking to hit with two or three torpedoes along with the, tor the dive bomber. You want to get fire, you want to get flooding. Alternatively, if the fighters are dead and he's not getting any time, you do one fire, you keep the planes out of anti-air, you wait till the fire's repaired or it naturally expires, then you go with the torpedo bombers and you get d damage. And if he repairs the fire, the flooding and whatnot, then you send in the final dive bomber, you trigger the fire, that's him dies. The, the, the constant dotting, the alpha striking, even if nobody else shoots him, will kill off the carrier. And in a close game, when you kill off the enemy carrier, it gives you that point advantage you need. Or you just prevent the enemy uh, group from scouting with his dive bombers. This is usually what is the case in typical games. One of the other things that might happen is a cruiser might come back or a destroyer might come back to give defensive fire. If that happens, that's great, because ultimately you just want to pressure the car, you want to pressure the enemy team, you want to force them to maybe play defensively or not their intended purpose or the way they want to go about it. So anyway, that's carrier pressure 312. If you're a 222 carrier, you're looking for a windows of opportunity. You don't want to get bombed yourself. You kind of want to maybe position yourself in such a way that it's, it's harder for the enemy to strike you by going by an island, that type of thing. Maybe you can position yourself in such a way that you're actually close to your team with kind of uh, overlapping defensive from a battleship or something. But waiting come to the end of the game, you can choose to strike at a particular ship. Anyway, but I digress. There are a hundred million possible scenarios, but that is how you pressure with a 312 carrier. So uh, to recap, We've had a look at the ship setup, uh, the modules, what modules you go. We've seen what signals we used in setup. We know what captain skills we use. Uh, we know kind of uh, in a kind of a broad introduction, uh, kind of fighter engagements when they come into each other, and then we've also looked at a sample scenario in uh, Trident on kind of uh, fleet setup, fleet combat, that type of scenario.
so anyway, that is uh, it for this kind of crash course introduction to carrier gameplay. Uh, if you want to know more, please by all means uh, message me below uh, in the comment section, or alternatively just whisper me directly in game. Uh, I'm far as hell from the EU server, and um, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, maybe we'll make a tutorial video again on something else. Thanks, guys.